Hello, welcome to Tea Time. We usually do this in the afternoon, but there's never a bad time for a nice cup of tea, is there? This is Thinking Out Loud with Ian Curry. Have you ever been in a situation where doing the right thing will get you into trouble? I mean, really in trouble. It happens, doesn't it? Sometimes doing what we know to be right will mean the outcome will be a lot less pleasant than if we just go along with everyone and do what they're doing. Today I have a story for you that illustrates this very well. Come on, let me tell you what I think. you like a nice cup of tea? In a moment I'm going to show you how I like to make tea. I'm sure plenty of my English friends will be having a laugh and they'll be laughing at me for not using a tea bag and a mug and a dollop of sugar. But holding my ground, I'll have to tell them that would be builder's tea. Meanwhile, my American friends will probably be looking on in bemusement and wondering why I'm not adding ice but let's do this anyway, shall we? Do you know there's been wars fought over tea and nations split and even formed? Again, my American friends might think I'm talking about the Boston Tea Party. And the Boston Tea Party was the birth pains of a nation. Although dumping good tea into a harbour seems like a waste of good tea to me. But Hong Kong and China feature in this story too. England is famous for drinking tea, but tea isn't grown there at all. Tea drunk in England used to come from China, but these days it's as likely to come from India or parts of Africa too. History isn't my strongest subject, but since very few of my friends seem to have ever heard of the opium wars and how they affected tea, I'll try to sum them up very briefly. I'm really simplifying things here. And of course, war is always much more complicated than just one point of view. Long ago, in the middle of the 1800s, there were a couple of wars that had tea as the main component. And these were the wars that later became called the Opium Wars. England was addicted to tea and people in China were addicted to opium. And one of the ways England paid for tea was trading in opium. And opium was already illegal, but England did it anyway. They still bought opium to China's shores in exchange for tea and other goods. Eventually, a skirmish between trading ships escalated into all-out war. England won both wars and took Hong Kong as a result of the trade of opium for tea, and then that trade continued for decades after. Soon after the end of the wars, this ship, the Cutty Sark, was built to carry tea from China to England. And it was a job it did very well. Although I don't recall ever hearing about it carrying opium when I romped around its decks as a schoolboy. And checking out its history, that would likely have been one of its most profitable cargoes. Hmm. It's interesting how history gets cleaned up sometimes, isn't it? But perhaps it's just I don't remember that part. The Cutty Sark can be seen these days in Greenwich, and it's a famous maritime area downstream from central London. Afternoon tea is still a thing in our house, but we're very informal about it. I often drink green tea, and it's less likely to keep me awake at night and it's easier to find where we live. But today I'm drinking English tea. It's funny we call it that because, as I've said, tea isn't grown in England at all. First, the kettle has to be boiled. And before it's quite boiled, some of the hot water is used to warm the teapot. We pour that water out and then we add the tea waiting for the boiling water. 
Usually tea leaves are kept in a much bigger tea caddy, but these days we use tea bags more often, so this small tin will have to do. There, now it needs to steep for a few minutes. And to keep it warm, we put a tea cozy over the pot. It's like a hat for the teapot to keep it warm. While that's going on, we prepare the cups. And again, warming them with a little hot water. Now, we should be ready for that tea. Ah, ah, ah. Milk first. Now, you might think this is just silly. But there's a really good reason for it. This special china is called bone china and it stains really easily. I've been using this mug a good friend gave me for tea for a while now, and I've been making tea without milk. Do you see the stain? That's from the tannin in the tea. And if I did that with the posh china, I'd be in all sorts of trouble. Sometimes there are good reasons to do things the way everybody else is doing them. And sometimes, as my mum taught me, just because everyone else does it, doesn't make it right. Why we choose to do things is often influenced by those around us, but sometimes get much more important than that. One of my favorite chapters in the Bible is Daniel chapter 3, and in that chapter there are three words that are my favorite words in the story. Come on, let me show you. King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue, 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide, and set it up on the plain of Jura in the province of Babylon. Then he sent messages to the high officers, officials, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the provincial officials to come to the dedication of the statue he had set up. Well, that's a lot of officials, isn't it? So all the officials came and stood before the statue King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald shouted out, People of all races and nations and languages, listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of all of these musical instruments listed here, there's dozens of them. That was quite an orchestra, wasn't it? Bow down to the ground and worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into the blazing furnace. Well, now, this is a little bit more serious than does the milk go in first, isn't it? We've already seen how wars were fought over tea trading. So sometimes you can get really out of hand really quickly. Would you have been prepared to fight in a war over trading opium for tea? In our story today, three men decided enough was enough and wouldn't bow down. Then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you one more chance. Now, the three men were obviously the heroes here. They were willing to stand up for what they knew to be right. But I can't help noticing how they seem to come across as rather arrogant or indignant about the whole thing. Do you see how they spoke? Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God who we serve is able to deliver us. He'll deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. And here's my favorite three words. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor do we worship your golden image which you have set up. Those three words, but if not. But the way the three answered the king seems a bit like everyone around would have been making faces and thinking, ooh, now you've done it. And sure enough, in the next verse, we, we read, the king was furious 
and his face became distorted with rage. You can find out what happens to the three by reading the rest of Daniel chapter 3. This story has a happy ending, but not all stories where people stand up for what they believe in end so well, do they? Doing the right thing can often cause difficulties for us, particularly in the short term. But being followers of Jesus, we sometimes have to stand up and be counted even if that number is just three, as in the case of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In our family, we know that motorcycles are very dangerous. There was a tragedy in our family years ago. They can be fun too, though, but given a choice, we usually avoid them. Visiting a big city a while ago, I was asked if I'd like to get across the city by public transport or on the back of a motorcycle. And I said, well, that doesn't sound safe to me. And was told, well, everybody does it here. Can you see the choice? Now, it's not the same as a fiery furnace choice. But can you see that just because everyone else does it doesn't make it right for me to do it? Instead of riding a motorcycle, I rode a bus, I rode public transport, and you know, I'm a fan of trains and buses, so it was no hardship. But I took these pictures of the motorcycles for you to see. But I'm rather glad I was on the bus and not on one of them, because once we started our journey, the rain started pouring down, and I was safely inside in the dry. What are some of the things you have had to decide to do or not to do that everyone else does? How do you know what is right and what is not? It can be very difficult to know what's right and what's the right thing to do sometimes, can't it? And the decisions are even harder when both choices in front of you seem to be sort of all right. Having strong beliefs is often a good thing, but it's important to be sure what we believe is real and worth the pain of standing up for. When something is really important, and it's scary at the same time, you can be sure God is right there with you. And Isaiah 41 has a verse that says, Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. And while I tried to keep my eyes on Jesus at those times, I like what the very next verse says. See, all your angry enemies lie there, confused and humiliated. And while I'm not vindictive or spiteful, I rather like the idea of people who choose not to stand up for a right being the ones confused and humiliated for a change. Most of us will never face a fiery furnace for our choices. But we may face ridicule or scorn for those things that we choose, and those things can hurt us in other ways, can't they? What are some of the things that you have stood up for? And how strongly do you believe what you say you believe? These are tough questions and far more difficult than choosing how to drink tea, aren't they? I hope these videos are helping you to think about some unusual things and helping you to decide for yourself what you believe. If you've enjoyed this video, share it with your friends. If you haven't already, subscribe. This has been Thinking Out Loud with Ian Curry. Until next time, goodbye.